Welcome to episode 14 in this series where we're building an application within Flutterflow using Superbase as the back end. I hope you enjoyed the series so far. And of course, if you've missed any previous episodes, please do check the link in the description because they are all there if you wish to follow along. In this episode, we are going to be making some enhancements to our application because the community has spoken. They would like us to see some modifications where we can actually track the progress of our goals. Instead of using the progress slider, we can actually use the tasks themselves to track the progress with inside the application. So there's some tweaks that we need to make to the UI. So without further ado, let's get cracking. So I've been receiving fantastic comments from everybody in terms of this series, and I really do appreciate that. There's one particular comment that actually stood out for me, and that was around the actual progress of the particular goals. So at the moment, as you know, if I just bring one of these up, you can see here that we've got this slider that represents the actual progress of an actual goal. And of course, that's represented up in this particular progress bar here and this particular percentage. But actually, there's a great idea from the community that actually said, well, instead of actually using that, why not actually calculate the percentage on the number of tasks that are being completed against the total number of tasks that you actually have got. So that is a fantastic idea. Let's go and change the application to use that now. Okay, so we need to make two changes with inside our application to now use the actual tasks as our indication for percentage. Now, of course, we've got the progress bar in the middle here, and then we've also got the uh, the kind of the text combination that we have here that kind of shows the equivalent value. Let's all focus on changing the progress bar, and we're going to make some changes to the code expression itself. So if you just select the actual progress bar on the right hand side, click on code expression. And as you can see here, with inside the code expression, we're putting in the progress. Um, this is the number that we're representing within inside our goal we're going to have to remove this and then make some changes so the first thing i'm going to do is hit the remove option and i'm going to add an argument okay we need to put two arguments in here one to carry the total number of tasks that we've actually got and of course the number of completed tasks that we've got so with inside this just choose the var on the top here let's make a change here and let's say number tasks like that and of course this is going to be an integer um, and that's all that we need to do and then in the value we need to set this of course we're just going to choose the, the selector here and we're going to go to the goals row and we're going to scroll down here and we're going to say a number of tasks so just choose that then move down to the add argument on this particular one let's just choose this one here and we're just going to call this one completed tasks like that and then with inside here of course it's going to be an integer and we're just going to choose the selector here and we're going to go to our goals row and we're going to choose the number of uh, completed tasks like that so that's our arguments now all set up we now just need to now make a change now to our actual uh, expression so if you recall our expression at the moment is taking in what was the progress and it was dividing it by 100 to give us our percentage but we need to make a change here so let's now delete this out and let's now get a little bit more technical now with our expression but do follow along um, it might not be uh, quite so simple to understand for people who aren't particularly familiar with coding but um, hopefully it'd be quite self-explanatory once I tell you what's going on so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to tie we're going to say the number um, of tasks okay is going to be not equal to zero okay so the first thing that we're going to check is that is are the number of tasks not equal to zero so a positive value okay and then what we're going to do is we're going to put a little, a little question mark here and this is basically going to say that if it's not equal to zero then carry out the next part of the expression okay so i'm just going to do an open a space and an open bracket and i'm going to say completed so, all right, completed tasks and we can divide them okay by the number of tasks okay and then I'm just going to close that off and then I'm going to times it by 1.0 okay so of course we know that like 0.1 will represent 10% 0.2 was re represents 20% etc right up to 1.0 which will represent 100% okay now of course if our number of tasks here all right are not uh, are um, anything other than not equal to zero so um, for example just zero itself then what we're going to do is we're then going to return so I put a little a colon here and we're going to say naught point naught so that will represent zero percent okay so just always bear that one in mind that we're saying here the number of tasks are not equal to zero carry out this particular calculation of course um, if it's zero itself then everything after the colon there is just return 0.0 
And what's really the reason why that's really important that we do it like this is because, of course, we're trying to calculate, we're trying to divide completed tasks by the number of tasks. And of course, if you try complete, if you try dividing zero by zero, well, you're not going to get a result. So this is why we only carry out this particular uh, part of the expression, of course, if, if number of tasks are not equal to zero. And of course, anything else, we just return the zero. So hopefully that is self-explanatory for you here. So I'm just going to hit the check errors option and hopefully everything should look good for us. And I think we're in a good state. So we can just hit confirm. Now, I'm pretty confident now if we actually run this application up that um, the progress bar will now represent the actual number of tasks. So uh, let's give that let's give that a go now. So here I am then in test mode. Let's click on the actual test goal itself. So you can see here that we've got two tasks and we've got zero that have been completed. And quite rightly here in this progress bar, we're seeing that this is not filled at all. So that feels about right for me here. So click on the actual uh, goal itself. Let's now complete one of the tasks. Let's go back. And you'll see here that brilliant, the progress bar moves up to about halfway. And of course, we know that this is going to stay 0% because we haven't adjusted that yet. If I just go back here, let's just choose this here. Let's go back and we should see the progress bar move right across. So everything is looking great for us. Let's now focus our attention on modifying this percentage here because it's slightly different to what we just introduced on the progress bar. So let's go and do that now. So back then in the UI builder, let's make a change then to this particular text that we got here. The first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to click on the actual progress bar itself, move over to the code expression, and let's just make a copy of it. So we can copy it to the clipboard and then we can then paste that back in and then make a few modifications. So just say copy variable and then move over to the text that we got here, move over to the text combination up to where it says progress. Let's hit the edit here. And then what we're going to want to do is just click on the little three dots there and say paste variable that will replace everything that was there previously we don't need to retype any of this stuff which is really good but what we need to do is we need to make a little slight change here now we know that the number of tasks are not equal to zero this is all absolutely fine we're still going to carry out this particular calculation but of course what we're trying to do here is instead of um the progress bar which requires you know 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 up to 1.0 in our case we're going to want to say one percent two percent 10%, 20%, etc. cetera. So we're gonna to want to change this instead of saying 1.0, let's just delete that off. Let's just say 100. Okay, so if we say check errors, that should all be pretty good for us, I think. There we go, no errors, that's exactly what we're looking for. But we need to make some additional modifications, of course. We need, need to do some formatting now um, because we don't want to see, you know, 33.33% or 66.66% coming out. We're gonna to want to bring that down to just to say 33% or 66%. So we need to do some custom formatting, OK? So down here, we just choose this and we're going to say number format on the formatting. Let's just scroll down here. And where it says num uh, number of format options, you can see here we've got a number of different types of formats of available that we're actually looking for. But none of these are really what we want. I mean, this is not quite what we want, 23.4%. We just want it to be like 23% or something like that. So we're going to go down to custom and we're going to specify the format itself. So just choose this. And then in the actual custom format, we just need to add some additional detail in here. OK, so I'm going to do hash hash and zero okay now if you can see here you can just see down the bottom here that we're seeing a, a representation down here of what it would actually be so we'll say like one two three four point fifty six is going to be one two three five obviously it's, it's rounding it up but this is kind of the number that we're looking for of course you know you can put point in here and you can start seeing that we're starting to see different representations of the actual output that we need so this for me um, is pretty well much giving us everything we need and of course you want to have a look at these custom four Format, formats just click on the little uh, little icon here this will take you off then to a web page which will give you some examples of these type of formats and the sort of things that you can actually use in here but this is um, all that we actually need um, we're gonna we're gonna put on the end of it the little percentage you can just see it here we're tacking this on the end so this is good as everything that we need here um, I don't think we need to put a default variable in there but um, maybe just for good measure let's just put a zero in there and say confirm there we go that's everything that we need hit confirm as well again and hopefully that expression now should work for us so let's now pop back into the test mode and let's see if this now works for us 
So here we are running the application. You can see almost instantly now I've done a reload here. You can see we've got 100% this written there, but let's just test this. Let's just click on the actual goals here. Let's just take one of these off, hit back, and you see that it says 50%. And just to prove that it's all looking good at 0%, let's go down there and you can see that it's 0%. So you can see now that by making this particular change, the application is actually more useful. Um, so what we now need to do is we now need to go away and we want to probably remove now that, that progress indicator that we've actually got to represent the goal. So let's quickly go back to the UI and let's just remove that out and let us get us back to using this um, as the as the final indication of, um, of our progress with our actual goals. Let's go and do that now. So here we are then back in Superbase and I've clicked on the actual table editor over here and I've gone to goals. And as you can see here, this is the column that we know we no longer need anymore. So we're going to get rid of it. So it's quite simple to do that. And with inside here, you can go down to the actual database section just here on the left hand side. Choose that. And you've got your tables come up. And of course, here are the two tables that we've created in a previous part of the series. So here's the goals one. Let's hit the little edit option just up here and we can scroll down here and we we can actually just strike off this particular progress row here so just choose that choose the x and it's gone quite simple as that hit save and everything should be updated for us successfully but our job is not done we may have just got rid of the actual column of inside superbase but we need to go back to flutterflow now and we need to update our project to no longer reference that particular column so let's go back to flutterflow and do that now See, we are back in Flutterflow on the home page, and of course, everything is looking uh, pretty good for us up there, of course. But if we tried running this application now, it would fail miserably on us because we've just gone and removed the column from the database. So, when, of course, whenever you manipulate the database, you, you know, you, you add columns or you remove columns or anything like that, you do need to go back into Flutterflow and you do need to update the schemas. OK, so as soon as we do that, of course, then our projects can have lots of errors that we can go and correct. So let's move over to the actual little cog here on the left hand side here the settings let's move down to the super base integration that we've got here now I'm going to say get schema here choose get schema and it's going to overwrite it say yes and um, with inside our actual goals you can see that the progress uh, field has now disappeared but of course up the top right here you can see that we've now got some issues that we now need to now, now need to deal with but of course we were expecting that so let's move now over to the actual widget tree itself and let's now start correcting these problems. Now quite, they're gonna be in with inside our actual goal components here that we need to adjust, but you can just select this here. You can see that we've got some, some particular issues. So we can just click on these and it takes us right into where we have our first problem. Of course, it's taking me straight into one of the screens where we're trying to insert the row. And you can see here it says the field no longer exists. So just hit the remove option um, and that should be good. We've got the little tick up here which says we've no longer got any issues in this particular action itself. So just hit uh, close there. Let's now choose the next one. Let's just choose this again. And you can see we're right back in here as well. And we can just hit the little remove here. And we know that we're all good. Hit close. And we've got one more left. Let's just have a look here. And it's, it's talking about a uh, property. So of course, this particular slider is no longer needed anymore. So we can just select this. We can hit delete and that's gone. And you can see we've got a little bit of a, a visual issue here. So within the actual goal status here, we can just put some padding on here. Um, I think it was about 20, I think, that we just brought it down a little bit more than 16. So that's pretty well much our, our project sorted. Um, we just need to make sure that um, within inside the update, uh, the actual create goal component, we've also got to remove the slide from here as well. We no longer need this anymore. So just choose that. Let's go up to the actual goal status here. Let's just choose 20 and that moves it down. So um, I'm pretty confident that if we fire up the application now, everything should be good. So I'm going to give that a quick check to make sure we're OK. So here we are in test mode. Um, I think everything is looking pretty good for us here. No errors or anything like that. Let's just click on the actual task itself. Everything seems to be working as it does. Let's just uh, try to update the actual progress itself. So let's let's change. Uh, let's just just say the test goal two, and let's say uh, not started. For example, say update goal. Everything looks like it's working as expected. And obviously, we've now no longer got that that slider that we now need to manipulate you can see probably we've got a bit of a gap here we probably need to sort that out at some stage but really that's just a case of just changing the uh, the size of the actual reference on the actual component on the bottom the bar that actually loads up other than that everything's looking in good shape um so we can move on to the next one
So there you go. Thanks for watching this particular episode. Hope you found it really, really useful. You can see that we still need to make some progress with Insider application. One notable change I think we need to make is that actually when you have completed all tasks, I would like to see the goal actually get auto completed as well. So we're going to be doing that in some upcoming episodes. We're also going to be focusing on some animation to really make the application pop and stand out. And I'm sure there is more tweaks that we're going to make to it along the way. So please do continue to watch the series. And of course, please do like the video really do appreciate your likes it really does help the video out and of course please do subscribe to the channel as well if you are enjoying flutterflow if you're enjoying no code space please do be part of the community so until the next episode i'll see you soon